On the block sphere, we saw in the previous lessons that we could also rotate around the z-axis. This is called phase. It may not seem very useful, as the probability of measuring a 0 or a 1 is still the same, no matter how much we rotate around. But phase is what makes quantum computers as powerful as they are. We will get into the uses of phase in the next lesson. In this lesson, we will see how we can represent phase mathematically. To represent phase, we have to bring back our old friend, complex numbers. In quantum computing, we mostly use complex numbers in exponential form. You will now see why. But first, let's consider some states and the block sphere. Let's first consider the states 1 over root 2, 0, plus 1 over root 2, 1. If we apply a z-gate, we get it to the state 1 over root 2, 0, minus 1 over root 2, 1. As you can see, the 1 state was multiplied by a factor of negative 1, and the qubit rotated pi radians around the z-axis. If we represent the negative 1 as a complex number in exponential form, we get e to the i pi. Notice how the angle of the complex number is pi radians. Let's try another example. Let's plot the state 1 on root 2, 0, plus 1 on root 2, 1, and 1 on root 2, 0, plus i on root 2, 1. If we represent i as a complex number in exponential form, we get e to the i pi over 2. And if you look at the block sphere, to get that state, we rotate pi over 2 radians around the z-axis. We use complex numbers in exponential form in quantum computing since it gives us a nice mathematical way of rotating around a circle by changing the value of phi. By multiplying the one state of the qubit with the complex number e to the i phi, we rotate the qubit around the z-axis by phi radians. But why is it the 1 state and not the 0 state being multiplied by the complex number? There are two types of phase, global phase and relative phase. Global phase is when the entire qubit is multiplied by a complex number, and relative phase is when just the 1 state is multiplied by a complex number. It turns out the global phase is physically irrelevant. So the state e to the i phi times 1 over root 2 0 plus 1 over root 2 1 is logically equivalent to the state 1 over root 2, 0, plus 1 over root 2, 1. Relative phase, on the other hand, is extremely important and matters in our calculations. Relative phase is when the amplitude of the one state has a factor of a complex number. As we saw earlier, having relative phase rotates the qubit on the block sphere around the z-axis. But what if we have a complex number in both the amplitudes of the zero state and the one state? What we do is we factor out the complex number of the zero state from the entire qubit, creating a global phase and relative phase. Then we can discard the global phase, leaving us with a qubit with a relative phase. We saw previously on the block sphere that phase does not affect the probability of measuring a zero or a one, as the qubit stays the same distance from the zero state and the one state, no matter how far we rotate around the block sphere. If we look at an arbitrary qubit state, alpha 0 plus e to the i phi beta 1, the probability of measuring a 1 is the magnitude of e to the i phi beta squared. We can split the absolute values up like this. The magnitude of e to the i phi is 1, since the coefficient of the complex number in exponential form states its magnitude. So the probability of measuring 1 is still the magnitude of beta squared. In the next lesson, we will see why relative phase matters.